there alien civilizations in the universe? Some vastly more advanced than we? It gives me chills, fevers my brain. There are at least 100 billion stars in our galaxy and 200 billion galaxies in the universe. There must be other intelligences, scientists assume. Why? There is nothing special about our sun and our Earth. But if there are so many alien civilizations, why no evidence? No artificial structures anywhere in space. No communications. The Great Silence. That's the Fermi Paradox, the haunting question asked by physicist Enrico Fermi. Alone? Not alone. Either way changes us forever. I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn, and Closer to Truth is my journey. I start my search with those who do search. Jill Tarter is director of the Center for SETI Research, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. She was the model for the Jodie Foster character in the film Contact. Doug Vakoch is the only social scientist at SETI. How do we deal with the so-called Fermi paradox? If there are intelligent aliens, where are they? The Fermi paradox has a robust structure of a paradox only if you can say they aren't here. And then you can conclude that there cannot have been any technological civilizations at any other time in any other place. We're the first. But can we say they're not here? Well, I don't think they're abducting Aunt Alice off the streets for salacious medical examinations. And I don't think that they've come hundreds of or thousands of light years to crash in the last mile uh, in the deserts of New Mexico. But we've so poorly explored even our own little corner of the universe, that there could be many forms of intelligent technologies, alien colonizers here, but they're nanoscale, or they're not the model that we think of, of the big, wet, fat biology. It may just be a very implausible that if another civilization wants to make contact, that they would use all of the energy to travel across interstellar distances when they can really get um, everything that they would want out of sending radio signals, sending very brief laser pulses to establish communication with another civilization, to learn about another civilization in a much easier and much quicker way. And we can't rule out the possibility that extraterrestrials may have very different motivations than we do. So that when we posit colonizing civilizations, that may be a reflection of what we would do if we had the capability. Now again, the argument, um, perhaps uh, all it takes is one civilization to do that, um, can be a compelling argument if you view all civilizations in the galaxy as independent of one another. But perhaps there is a coordination between civilizations civilizations, you know, one of the explanations for why no one is here is that the Earth is sort of a, a wildlife preserve, uh, that, that we're under quarantine, or that, that there may be well someone out there, um, but they are not making themselves known, and uh, that it's very intentional not to. And maybe they're waiting for us to initiate contact. What about the argument that you hear sometime about civilizations when they get to a certain point that virtual reality becomes more exciting than real reality? Then the prize would be to go find the real ones and not destroy what's unique about them. Murray Gelman once talked about the, the simulation 
uh, versus reality as being like the difference between math and physics or the difference between masturbation and sex. And, and we, we as a species, an intelligent, curious, exploratory species, do seem to prefer the sex part of it, the, the reality. Well, uh, what to me is, is so exciting is that the more you push yourselves in your thinking, the more you expand your horizons, because whatever we're going to find, the history and astronomy and cosmology, just without any life forms, is so rich with surprise. I'd hope so. But we do have a, a long history of still seeing ourselves as the pinnacle of a, an infinite ascent and maybe not being as open-minded as we should be. There should be vast numbers of aliens, but there's no evidence of any of them. Maybe they don't go visiting. Maybe they don't like talking. Maybe they're too busy. There are a million maybes. How to estimate the number of intelligent civilizations in the galaxy? It's called the Drake Equation, and I go see the man himself. Frank Drake is a pioneer in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence and renowned for devising the Drake Equation. The equation is an equation which gives us an estimate of the number of detectable civilizations in our galaxy. It simply quantifies the history of the evolution of our solar system and the life on Earth. And the way it works is that we start with the rate of star formation. The more stars you have, the more opportunities to have life, obviously. Right. If you multiply that by the fraction of stars which actually have planetary systems, right. you have the rate of production of planetary systems. Okay. More is better, yep. as far as we're concerned. Right. You then multiply by the third factor, which is the number of possibly habitable planets in each system. The question that some ask is that if there are all these civilizations, why don't we see evidence for it? We have been, in a way, misled by science fiction, where you dial up Scotty and say warp seven, and you go from one star to the next in the time it takes to give a commercial. Well, the universe isn't that way. It is a great distance between the stars. And the time for travel between the stars is enormous. Even the nearest star takes four years to reach at the speed of light. It takes us, with present spacecraft, hundreds of thousands of years to go the distance to the nearest star. Would you really want to spend 100 years traveling in a cramped spacecraft watching the same movies over and over? And it's even much worse than what I just said because the amount of energy required, no matter what your propulsion system is, if you work it out, is equivalent to 200 years of the total electric power production in the United States. In other words, you have to set, shut down America for 200 years to launch this mission, which is never gonna come back. So my answer to the Fermi Paradox is, to, well, there are two answers. One is an intelligent civilization will not attempt Inter interstellar space flight. Only the dumb ones would, and, and they don't know how to do it. And the other answer is, there's no need, because what we want to gather is information, and we can do that at the speed of light with radio and light waves at much less cost. The hypothesis that, for whatever reason, our civilization is indeed the only intelligent civilization in our, our universe, is that something that you would consider? I think it's preposterous. Uh, there's nothing special about our solar system. If you, st if you came to the Milky Way galaxy and looked for an interesting star to visit, you wouldn't come to the sun. The sun is the most average star in temperature, age, chemical composition. Nothing happens with the sun. It doesn't vary much. It has a few sunspots. Boring, boring, boring. It's boring until you get close enough and you say, hey, look. There's that blue planet, and if you look closer, oh, hey, there's chlorophyll on it. And if you look real close, you see super highways and airplanes flying around, which tells me that what happened here must have happened in many, many places. And given that there are 10,000 million, million, million stars in the universe, it's preposterous that there aren't other intelligent creatures. Preposterous, Frank? Statistically, his argument seems sound. 
The number of stars are unfathomable, and ours is just a normal, boring one. I'm still troubled by the lack of evidence. Something seems missing. Much of the extraterrestrial debate revolves around advanced technology. This is the world of Ray Kurzweil, inventor and futurist. No one sees technology's horizon clearer than Ray. We meet in his office near Boston. We can't rule out that they may be out there, but most scientists actually look at this from a linear perspective and assume that other civilizations are out there and it would take millions of years to get from where we are now to a point where they might, for example, have solar system or, or even galaxy-wide technology. We've gone in just a century and a half from the Pony Express to where we are now, which is very impressive, and you go out another century and a half, uh, we will be saturating the matter and energy, at least here on Earth, with computational processes that will be trillions of trillions of times more powerful than all of human intelligence today. And if the SETI assumptions are correct, there should be millions of these civilizations out there. Okay, some would be behind us, some would be ahead of us, but the ones that are ahead of us, which should be about half of them, would, aren't going to be just 20 years ahead. They're going to be millions of years ahead. Well, it's only a few centuries ahead. They would be taking over their solar system. Certainly within a million years, they would be really taking over their galaxies and would be not only doing galaxy-wide engineering, but would be transforming their galaxies into beacons of incredibly uh, transcendent in te uh, technology and intelligence. And there should be millions of them that are millions of years ahead of us. And we don't notice any of them. We don't notice anything going on. And people describe this process as finding a needle in a haystack, but a civilization like that would be putting out trillions of trillions of needles, which is to say intelligent signals. And we would notice this. And you can make an argument as to why any one civilization wouldn't be noticeable, but the whole city assumption is there should be millions of them based on the Drake formula. So what's your conclusion? My conclusion is we're probably alone. I really would be surprised if we ran into somebody else out there. Here's Ray's argument. If there are alien intelligences, they have technology. Technology grows exponentially. Thus, even one advanced civilization anywhere in the visible universe would have so transformed its galaxy as to be noticeable nothing such is noticeable, therefore we are likely alone. I've heard all the other arguments, but Ray's technology argument stopped me cold. Is there an argument from biology? Francisco Ayala says there is. He is a distinguished evolutionary biologist at the University of California at Irvine, where we meet. Well, first let me start with my conviction that the probability of intelligent life evolving is so incredibly low. If intelligent life would have arisen somewhere, they would have allowed us to know it. They would have communicated with us. So I believe the efforts to communicate with aliens with intelligent life in the universe is a wasted effort. I, I don't believe they are there. Maybe they're just sitting on their planet and they're just not curious. Maybe curiosity is a human trait. And if you're a very intelligent species, you just want to sit where you are until you kind of use up the resources of your planet, then you just hop to another one and that's all you should do. And it's well, <laughs> to me, that's a sign of lack of intelligence. <laughs> I mean, intelligence seeks knowledge. If some intelligent beings exist, they want to know whether other creatures are there like them, where they can communicate. You cannot avoid that. I don't know any serious evolutionist who believes that there is intelligent life in the universe. I think the ones who believe in that do not understand the evolutionary process because the incredible improbability, which goes beyond anything that the universe can handle, of, of intelligent life coming about. This means that you are actually contradicting a large percentage of the scientific community who 
believe strongly that there are innumerable planets, maybe billions, that have intelligent life. Well, I believe there are billions of planets uh, that are likely to have life, but I don't think they have intelligent life. One who understands evolution realizes that no matter how many billions and trillions and trillions of trillions of planets, the probability that intelligent life would have come about is so insignificant that it could never come about again. So the almost impossible leap, according to Francisco, is not from non-life to life, but from life to intelligence. Because intelligence requires so vastly many steps to evolve, he concludes that the only intelligent life in the universe is us. Either way, alone, not alone, changes our worldview. How would aliens affect religion? To find out, I meet Stephen Dick, the chief historian at NASA. He has something called cosmotheology. We meet at the U.S. Naval Observatory in Washington. Well, if we are not alone, uh, it has uh, many implications, probably more implications than if we, if we are alone. Because if we are not alone, we have to interact with those extraterrestrials. We have to rethink our entire philosophy and theology, I would say. If we are alone, then we can move out into the solar system, into the cosmos, and uh, basically shape the cosmos to our own wills, our own wishes. What about the theology and humans' understanding of religion? How will that be affected either way on this debate, if we're not alone or if we are? Well, if we are alone, that's the scenario that's been worked out over the last several thousand years by theologians. Uh, uh, if you take uh, just uh, Christianity, for example, there's no problem with the doctrine of the Incarnation. Humans are the center of the universe. Uh, Christ could have saved them, and, and, and it's no problem. If uh, you have extraterrestrials, then you get into a scenario, well, either that Christ, uh, by dying on the earth, was somehow able to save everybody in the universe, which seems unlikely, or that you have a planet-hopping savior who has to hop around every time there's an Adam and an Eve on another planet. And keep living and dying all over again. Exactly. Which has some internal contradictions. Yes, the theologians wouldn't like that either. Or the third possibility is that there's another way to salvation on other planets other than through Christ, and that's a whole other kind of problem. Yes, it opens uh, all kinds of interesting questions which I think should be addressed and probably would enrich current theologies in any case. People who are atheists, who are outside of religion, tend to think that it would be the end. That would be it. And I tend to agree with the former. There would be adjustments that would be made because the alternative is extinction, and I think uh, over the last several thousand years, if anything's been proven, it's that theology and religion is very... Uh, robust. Robust, yes, <laughs> is a good word. And it's going to continue in one form or another. Now, I would argue that uh, we should have something like um, that, what I call a cosmotheology. Cosmotheology just means that we need to take into account what we know about the universe, including whether or not there are extraterrestrials. If we're not at the center of the universe in a biological sense, that means that uh, we are most likely not at the top of the great chain of being, of all of these beings. If we are not alone, if the universe teems with intelligent life, then the theist says, see, God created the universe so that it would surely bring forth life. But the atheist says, see, humans aren't special at all. If we are alone, if the universe has no intelligent life but us, then the theist says, see, humans are special. But the atheist says, see, the universe does not easily bring forth life, and we are just an accident. I need a visionary. David Brin, with a doctorate in space science, is an award-winning science fiction writer. If there's anything about extraterrestrials that David has not thought about, 
it's probably not important. Do you think we're alone? Well, I have made it my thing to not answer that question because I'm trying to take a multiple perspective on it. Let's dismiss from the start UFOs, okay? Uh, if, if there are silver guys coming down and disemboweling cattle and kidnapping farmers, they're not intelligent life. Just look at their behavior. But the gap goes back even farther. For two billion years, the Earth was prime real estate, ever since microbes made an oxygen atmosphere. And there were no people around to defend it. What, slime molds and reptiles are gonna tell you go away? There are no signs in the rocks not only of ancient cities, but of the biological changes that would have come with colonization from above. Now, the SETI program has been looking for aliens, and we've already wiped out one part of their scenario, vast tutorial beacons uh, beneficently given by altruistic advanced aliens to help us youngsters along. But if we ever do get a hit, it will change our culture forever. We would become consumers of a greater culture. This happened to all human civilizations. But let's say we go out a million years or a billion years and it really looks like we're alone. We still haven't heard anything, seen anything. The fact what that are you saying? I've been in this for years and there's a tendency among all the bright minds who get involved in this field to pick one, to pick one explanation and say, this is it. Uh, Earth-like planets are rare. Life is difficult to get started. The internet will become so such a honeypot and we'll all get implants and we'll all get plugged in and we'll be so much bigger than we are now as people, almost godlike, that no one will want to go in starships because you'll be lobotomized. But what all of these explanations do is they leap on one thing and say this explains the silence, but very few of them deal with the problem of exceptions. Let's say 99.99999% of human beings become these cyber gods. There will still be some funky exception, hell's angels, who will say, ah, forget that, make starships, go to some other planet, sorry, system, have babies, and pass on that trait. Whatever exception to whatever your favorite explanation is, that's what's going to fill the galaxy. And we calculate that would fill the galaxy in 60 million years. And That's a sh very short time. And, and I blink. Okay, now let me take you to the time when you would be confident and it's gonna fall into one or two buckets. Either there are going to be alien intelligent life or there's not. Well, the implications if there's not alien life anywhere. Anywhere then I would have to say that we're living in a simulation or a, an intelligent creation. Because in my opinion, the odds of that in a randomly created universe are virtually nil. If we're totally alone, yes. then the implications are theological. That it implies that the galaxy has maybe one chance to fill with intelligence, and that would be us going out there. It puts an even greater burden on us to make our civilization succeed. But suppose we do make contact and we start getting information. What happens to our culture at that point? Well, I think that one of the great dangers and one of the reasons why they might be keeping us isolated in a, in a zoo is that as soon as we do meet an advanced alien civilization, our culture will be effectively over. I mean, we see this from first contacts all across human civilization. Maybe they're keeping us isolated to find out what we would become. Most scientists assume that it is virtually impossible that intelligent life should appear only on Earth. But where are they, all those aliens? As for the absence of evidence, there are explanations. Intelligent life destroys itself. Aliens are radically different from us. They don't travel, they don't communicate, they live in virtual worlds. They're here but undetected. The problem with any explanation is that there can be no exception, not in the entire universe. Because one exception could populate a galaxy in, say, 50 million years, barely a blink in cosmic time. 
if we are truly alone, would we be a creation or a simulation? What about brute fact luck? That seems absurd. If we are not alone, what could we learn? Would our culture survive? So we continue searching, perhaps getting closer to truth. For complete interviews and for further information, please visit closertotruth.com.